show you how I do the last step in the log walls in two parts. First I'll show you, or tell you, about how I mix mortar, and then uh, the last video will be how I actually put it in the cracks in between the logs. So this is my batch mixing plant out on the porch, so I can keep the mess out of the building. And uh, there's two parts to mortar, of course. One part is uh, the mortar mix itself. And what I use is uh, quick creeds, um, 60 pound sacks of mortar mix. And after trying a few different kinds, I found this is the whitest. And that's what I was trying to achieve, the whitest look I could. Uh, and I got, this is whiter than even mixing my own recipe, which I tried. The next thing is that's critical is that mortar needs to have exactly the right consistency. If it's too stiff, it crumbles and it won't adhere, it won't uh, stay in the cracks and fall out. And if it's too soupy, it'll slump away from the top of the crack. You put it in the crack and it'll just slump down. And you can't work it, you can't keep it in place. But if you have it exactly right, you smear it in there, it's just like putty, and it just it goes in and stays in, and you can make a real nice uh, surface on it. The trick is getting the right amount of water. And it's almost impossible to get the right amount of water by putting in some mortar mix, adding a little water, mixing it, adding a little more. Because while you're mixing it, it seems it's way too dry. And if you add too much water, it's too late. You can't take it out. So the trick is to measure it. So I made uh, a measuring vessel for the mortar itself. And after a few experiments, I found out that two number 10 tin cans full of mortar mix is the right amount for one batch for me. You can uh, work that and get it in place without having it uh, set up too fast. Plus, it's not too heavy to carry up the stairs and uh, other reasons. So I connected two coffee cans together and wired the, these handles in the middle that's near the center of gravity so it's easy to tip it over and dump it. Uh, so the first thing I do is add that to my pan. And I'm not sure if you can see it from there, but I make a ridge of mortar right about in the middle of the pan. Mortar mix. Just, just, uh, I'm making the dam is what I'm doing. And that has to be intact across so the water doesn't get behind it. That's not critical, but it works the best for me. Now the next thing is to measure out exactly the right amount of water. And I have a trick for that. I have this uh, uh, jar, I guess you call it, from some... Uh, stuff I used to take to keep myself hydrated. And uh, this has exactly the right amount of water for one batch. So I just pick it out of the bucket and pour it in here. Now the way I get the exact right amount of water in here is I'll show you that I have a hole cut in this jar right here. So when I hold on to the jar this way, dip it into a bucket that's pretty well full of water, and lift it out, it's at an angle. And then I set it down in this bucket that's empty. And when it levels off, the water pours out of that hole slowly enough so that when the water level hits exactly the right uh, depth, it stops running out. And then when I pick it up, I pick it up above the hole. And you can see that tips the vessel so that it doesn't run out the hole when I pick it up and dump it in. So I do that as soon as I pour this water in. Time is, the clock is running now because I've added water and so it's going to start working. But that is uh, settling down to the right value so by the next time I mix the next batch, my amount of water is already ready. Now the water is all on this side of that dam that I made out of the mortar. And I just pull dry mortar over the water and work my way back through the dam and it's getting more and more of the mix wet until 
I reach the end of the dam, cut a little mortar, and then I just start working it back and forth. This hole is uh, sort of fits the contours of the mortar mixing the end of the box. So it, uh, the trick is to clean out the corners of the box and the corner of the hole. Notice I have it at a height for me. My back is bad, so I don't like to lean over. I have the box up on these porches. I want to stand up straight and work this hole with my arms and shoulders. So now I push it out away from these corners to make sure that it's all wet. And then I pull it back. Sides. And then I work the hole into the back corners. If it's dry back there, which it is, I'm going to just shove more wet mortar in and scrape it. So, about now we have the mortar just done. See that consistency? You can tell because it kind of falls off the hole not too well. It's a little clumpy. You can jiggle and move the whole mass of ornaments. That's a sign that it's good and wide. You can't move the whole mass of water, you don't have mortar, you don't have enough water. Enough water. Now I have a bucket that I use for carrying it upstairs. I have a little trowel I use to sway it out of here. Just tip this over. It actually sounds and looks a little too dry, but it isn't. This is Part that recipe makes perfect more. So, and that's how I make it. In the next video, I'll show you how I put it in the wall. Thanks for watching.